So this is a 351R controller <clears throat> and what we want to cover is the buttons and what they mean and what the lights mean when you're looking at them. So if we start with the top left, you can see that um, for our standard configuration or what should be our standard configuration, this uh, the top left button is a ground disable button. Um, so when it is lit, when you come upon this controller, if it is lit, that means the ground elements inside are disabled. It will not trip for ground elements. Uh, typically this should not be lit. Um, the next button down is the reclose disabled. Again, this should not be lit normally. Uh, if it is lit, that means that the reclose is disabled. It will not reclose. When it trips, it will go straight to lockout. The next button down is <clears throat> something that we would use if you found this a controller in a substation. It's a SCADA disable, so if the dispatch has connections to this uh, relay and can command uh, close and open commands and control the reclose, uh, then we can disable that with this button. In the, on the line, this would not uh, be set for anything. Alternate settings again, um, this, was, this uh, generally is used sometimes and not all the time. Uh, lock, this is an important button. It has a, a note on here that says press for three seconds. If you hold this for three seconds, uh, it will lock the controller, which means that um, the only function of this controller that will work while it's still in lock is the open button. It will still always trip. Uh, the close button, the tag button, the ground, reclose, none of these buttons will function while this controller is locked. It will still always trip. Um, the only way to get those other buttons functionality back is to unlock it, which means holding it for three seconds again. And then now I have the capability to push these other buttons again. Um, up here to the top right we have the tag button. So when you're going to take a hold or place this controller into tag, we would push this button. Uh, as standard configuration, it automatically is going to disable the reclose. Um, it does that anyway with the settings, but, but now we also control the push button just so that it's a, a visible change. You can see that. So when we're in tag position, the reclose is disabled. The, the recloser will trip and go straight to lockout. Um, the counter button is uh, just for taking counts. The wake up button is if, the, if you come upon this controller and all the lights are off, uh, it doesn't mean that it's dead. It could mean it's dead, but it doesn't always mean it's dead. You have to hit the wake up controller and it will bring all the lights up and let you look at it. <clears throat> the second to last button here is the close button. Uh, a couple important things here. As a standard configuration again on our reclosers, when you hit close, we have a 10 second delay. Um, this is because we don't always have remote control of this and so by closing it you may be standing right in front of the, the recloser and we don't want you to be standing under it when it closes. So this gives you time to move away from the controller and let it actually uh, close after you give it the command. One important thing about that is that when you give it a close, uh, if you push it a second time it will cancel that close command. Uh, you do have to wait the full 10 seconds for it to close. And then the last button obviously is for opening or tripping the recloser. And again, we covered the, the functionality of that with the lock button. It should always trip when, even when it's in lock. Um, it won't do anything else while they're locked. Uh, one other thing also is when we tag a breaker or we put a hold on it, it disables reclose. It also disables the closing function as well. Uh, I cannot close a breaker that is tagged once it is open. I have to remove that tag and then I can close it. <clears throat> I'll wait for that to close and then we will show how the trip will always override every other command. And in this case, if I have it tagged, just like if it's locked, if I have it tagged, I can still always trip a recloser. That basically covers the functions of the buttons.
One other thing that we want to cover with this, uh, and it has more to do with the recloser itself, is that we've only been talking about closing and opening this from the recloser controller. But there's also the yellow handle that's actually on the recloser head that is the, the lockout handle for opening it. Um, notice that I'm able to close and open this recloser controller. If that yellow handle is pulled down and somebody actually manually locks out the recloser, you'll notice that when they do that, it would open up this, it would open up the recloser and we would see that down here on the recloser controller. Um, once that handle is pulled down, that recloser is in lockout as displayed above and we can no longer close that from the recloser controller. So we will wait for this 10 second timeout and we'll see that it will not operate. It, we can continue to do this and until we actually close that or push that manual yellow handle back to the up position on the recloser, we will not be able to do any function uh, of closing or opening this from down lower. So now that I push that handle back up, it does not close the recloser automatically. It just enables the ability to close it from the controller. And then now I can push the button again and in 10 seconds we should see it close. So again we're on the 351R controller and now we're going to talk about the, um, the buttons up here at the top. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about pushing these buttons up here. Again, the buttons down here do control the recloser, uh, like open, close, and that, so we wouldn't want to push those unless we specifically were trying to change something. These buttons up here, you should be able to go through the menus and you won't hurt anything on the controller. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the buttons and the lights that you may see. Um, a target reset, if you come up on this and you have targets or lights that are lit for different fault types after this recloser has operated and gone to lockout, um, or operated and not gone to lockout either way, um, you will push the target reset and it will eliminate all of the lights that were lit for that fault. Um, it also serves as a dual function here. The lamp test, notice that when I hit the target reset that it did test all the lights. It lit them up and then to let you know that they're working properly. Uh, the next button is the meter button. Um, we can enter this button and this also serves as a dual function of canceling. Um, normally what we have here is we have metering um, display for when this is in service. It will show currents that are flowing through the recloser while it's in operation and anytime I want to get back to that I can always hit the metering button and it will bring me back to to show me that. If I want to look at other types of metering I can select metering and these arrow keys will allow me to display other types of metering that are in here instantaneous maximum uh, energy demand. Um, we won't go through those functions right now. So the third button we have is the events button. If I come up to this and I see faults here, I, I possibly reset the targets already, but I may want to look into this event and uh, I may be asked to retrieve some fault information or currents, that, uh, fault currents so that um, some line patrolling can be done. So when I select events, let's say this is the first event at the top, if I want to scroll down, I can use the arrow down key over here and look at the events and you can see the event number here change. It should display the date and the time of the event. Um, let's say I want to look at event number two. Um, now I will use the right arrow key to go into that event and it will tell me it was a trip event. Uh, location dollar signs, um, that is because we don't use location function in distribution, so this is this should be ignored typically. Um, here um, it's displaying no fault currents. A, B, and C phase were one, uh, one, one, and two amps respectively. Um, so essentially this trip was an external trip, it was not a fault. Here is a trip event 6 
it had currents A phase and B phase and a trip. And when I scroll into this event, again, the, the location should be ignored. But now uh, it displays to me an amplitude for these currents. Uh, it looks like 3100 amps for A phase and B phase each. Um, I had nothing on C phase. Most importantly, what we're probably looking here is the actual event itself, what phases were involved, and those currents that are involved with it. Notice I'm using these keys to cycle through this event. Um, I can cancel out of that. When I cancel out, it'll take me back to the metering page. Um, a status button here will tell me if the recloser controller is functioning okay. Um, the other button, let me cancel out and go to the other button. There are some other functions in here where I can check on the battery, the recloser, I can look at targets, breaker monitoring, the date and the time. Again, I'll cancel out of that. Um, set and control, we're not going to worry about these buttons nor the group settings. These would be um, advanced buttons that somebody else may use. Uh, however, um, just know that we usually disable, and I say usually, um, we usually disable these functions to be able to change settings of the controller from the faceplate. So the only buttons that should do anything to make this recloser operate would be the lower buttons. And we can exit out of that. Go back to our main screen. So along with the lower buttons and the upper buttons, we do have these display LEDs here that um, may be important to you as well when you look at this controller. Um, the control enabled and AC light are usually that normal status is, is happening. The, the controller is enabled and functionally it's, it's protecting. The AC supply, um, if it was not there, then we would know this would be dead generally or operating on battery only. Um, the battery problem should not normally be lit. Um, currently this is a, um, does not have batteries in it, so it has showing a battery problem LED right now. Um, you would not see this normally. You should only see these lights lit typically. Um, the hotline tag, remember when we hit the button down here lower to put a, place a tag on this circuit, that should be lit and my reclose should be disabled as well. It will go away when I remove the tag. Uh, the trip would be indicated whenever I have a fault that has gone or has led this recloser to a trip event. This would be lit. If it was a due to a low set instantaneous or a fast curve uh, or an instantaneous trip, this would be lit. If it was a high set instantaneous, this would be lit. Um, our normal standard currently now is to not set this high set uh, current trip. So if you find this, um, it may be something to bring up to a local area engineer and we could have a discussion as to why this is set. Uh, 81 is an under frequency event. Um, this would be very non-typical to see this lit for a fault. The uh, recloser it would be indicated over here in this control state. Normally, when uh, I'm open, this recloser is in reclose lockout. It does not mean that the recloser is locked out of operation. It just means that the recloser is locked out. I can still close this recloser or breaker as long as everything is provided is, is in good condition. So I'll wait my 10 seconds. Once it closes, there is a timer involved with the recloser. So for the first initial 15 to 30 seconds after I close this, it will still remain in lockout. Once it's reset, that means that this recloser is now ready to reclose when it gets a fault. So if I, if I apply a fault to this or a fault was to happen on the line, it will reclose. Once it goes into reclose cycle, you'll see this one light and this one will go away would be pretty non-typical to see this one lit as you came up on it unless you were looking at it while it was in the middle of an event. Again we covered lockout when I trip it manually or when the recloser goes to um, through its full reclose cycle and the recloser is open this will be lit. For the fault types when I come up and I see that this is tripped this is a manual trip because only the trip is lit 
if a fault happened, I would see possibly A, B, or C phase, or ground, so a phase to ground fault, maybe A to ground would be an A and a ground would be lit. Uh, a phase to phase fault, I may see A and B lit. And then sensitive earth fault, we typically don't use this setting, um, but you could possibly see that lit as well.